Hey everybody, John and Don with Freshwater Systems. Today we're here to talk about Shark Bite and John Guest Prolock tube fittings. We're going to try to answer the question, are they amazing products, are they reliable, and is it something that we would recommend you use? Don is a water treatment professional with over 25 years experience of actually doing installations, service, and sales. I've been in the industry almost 30 years and I have a master water uh, specialist designation from the Water Quality Association. Well Don, these are both considered quick connect or push to connect and quick connect. The anatomy of them is similar, are they not? They absolutely are. Yeah, the shark bite is made of a brass body with uh, a collet, which is the release uh, mechanism to push the teeth in when you want to release the tool. It uh, has a, a ring of teeth, it has a, a spacer on top, and then an O-ring that uh, seals around the, uh, the pipe once you push it in all the way into the bottom. The John Guest fitting. Yeah, the John Guest fitting is uh, same basic components, but it assembles a little bit differently. Uh, this particular one, I can pull it apart, whereas the Shark Bite, it, it, you're not going to tear that one apart not to replace all. seals. But the, uh, the fitting body, uh, the O-ring lays in there, then this little spacer ring uh, sets in there, and that's what um, moves this collet uh, to a point where you can lock this down and the tubing won't back out. So it's a, it's a pretty handy little fitting that uh, once you get it together and, and pull it all the way down, this little collet stands up and it will not allow you to pull the tubing out. Great. To install a, a tubing, or to install this fitting on the tubing, um, you move this collar all the way up. And then you push the fitting into, or the tubing into the fitting. Now just to make sure that you've got plenty of tube inside, um, a good thing to do is to draw a little line where the pipe and the, the collar meet, and then go ahead and take the tubing back out and to make sure you've got plenty of depth into the fitting. That means that you're going to go all the way through that O-ring and make a good seal. But to further and finish the installation, the way these work is you move that collar down all the way till it's tight and that locks the collar in the up position and that tubing is not coming out of that fitting. So in comparison, how does the shark bike work? Very similar. You're going to uh when you cut the pipe, you're going to have some, probably have some burrs on it. So uh, Shark Bite has a handy deburring tool, which you're just going to put on there and, and twist, take any burrs off. It doubles as a, a marking tool, measuring tool too. So you can uh, take it, measure that, and mark right on your pipe so you can make sure you have enough put put in there. Inside the uh, the fitting, there's a tube support, which you definitely have to use for a PEX pipe, but you don't have to use it for rigid pipe. So you can. For, for new people using them, it's a, it's a lot easier if you take that out, which you can just press on the collet ring and pull the tube support out. And then you'll just line the pipe up and push it in until it stops and just make sure you've got it lined up with your line there so you, you've got plenty of depth again to seal against the O-ring. Yeah, make sure you've bottomed out and the, and the seal is good on the pipe. Exactly. Okay, Don, we've, uh, we've shown how to put the fittings on a piece of tubing. What kind of tubings are these good for? This is CPVC. Right, shark bite can be used on the CPVC uh, PEX tubing or the copper pipe. Uh, PEX tubing, you're going to use it with a tube support. It's going to go inside like that. Uh, you're going to check your depth and mark it as we did before, and then just push it, push it right into the fitting until it bottoms out and you match up with your line. And you can also transition uh, different materials. Absolutely, if you want to go from uh, PEX to, to copper, it's as simple as uh, pushing, pushing the type of pipe right into the fitting. Um, you mentioned the insert, and um, we talked a little bit about the, the John Guest plastic fittings. Right. Uh, that insert is also important if you're using PEX with the John Guest Pro Locks because you need to keep that tube stiff so that that little grab ring on the top, the thing that's holding the tube in the fitting, is is got plenty of, of strength, the tube stiffener if you want, want to call it that. Okay Don, these are easy to use. We can use them on a variety of material. 
But let's talk about the application a little bit. Um, typically, household plumbing, uh, we're using these. What about outdoor use or behind the wall use or possibly even buried use? Yeah, I mean, shark bite fittings are rated for being behind the wall or under, underground. It's not something that I would practice doing because uh, I would like to have the fitting where I could see it so that if there is a potential leak, you'd be able to get at it and fix it before it becomes a real problem. But uh, the other issue with uh, being outside is the O-rings that are in the shark bite could be uh, exposed to the UV light and could, could be potentially damaged by that as well. Yeah, I, I know in the, in the plastic connection world, the, uh, the white or off-white fitting connections are not UV protected. Um, black fittings give you a little bit more UV protection, but they're not really UV protected in the, in the true sense of it's made to, to, uh, to be resilient in that environment. Any, any fitting with a rubber seal is going to be suspect in extreme environments. Absolutely. Now, the shark bite has a lot more heat and, t and pressure tolerance, does it not? Absolutely, yep. Well, Don, we've put them together. We've talked about the material and some of the uses. How do you take these apart? Well, shark bite has a, uh, a disconnect tong, and there's, there's two ways you can use it. Uh, you have to get the correct side up so that you can slide it onto the fitting. That's upside down, so it won't fit on there. So you have to rotate it over, slide it onto the fitting. This top part of the tong will fit right on the collet. You squeeze down on that, pull out on the pipe. So how would you rate shark bite in reusable? Um, if, if I'm gonna put it on a different section of pipe or I'm gonna just put that pipe back together? Yeah, I, they are definitely reusable, but uh, you, there is some p potential problems. Uh, the teeth on the uh, on the grab ring can damage the, uh, especially copper pipe, and it can happen on the plastic pipe, so it may not be worth doing. Uh, you can also end up with dry, brittle O-rings, and that may not be worth trying to reuse it as well. Now, I've heard out of the box the Shark Bite seal has a lubricant on it, but if you pull it apart and reuse it, then, then that lubricant goes away. Absolutely. How tough would it be to put some uh, lubricant back on it? Well, you could do that. Um, again, there are the teeth in there, so you'd have to be careful as you, as you are re-lubricating -lubri it, but it's certainly doable. The John Guest uh, Pro Lock, it, uh, it comes apart uh, fairly simply, and it has fewer um, teeth, if you will, that are gonna scratch the, the tubing as the shark bite, but not quite as much. So I would prefer with the John Guest not to use it on copper. I would more be apt to think the plastics, the CPVC, the PEX type tubing is going to be a better application for the plastic push to connect John Guest. Would copper be the best for shark bites? Yeah, because of the, the design of the body being all lead-free brass and the temperature, uh, increased temperature considerations and pressure considerations, definitely a better fit for copper. More of a one-use. Now, I, you know, we're talking reusability here. Um, would, the, would the shark bite be better if it's one and done? You're not really planning to, to undo that connection and redo it? For the most part, yeah, but I, I think that they can be reused in, in the right application. Now, Shark Bite's been around for 15 years, 15, 20 years. Do you think that this is going to be a, a last the test of time in terms of can I build a house, use Shark Bite fittings, and in 30 years I'm still pretty comfortable those things are good? Uh, it, I definitely feel like as they, they'll be reliable and, and can be used. Awesome, awesome. One of the things I like about the John Guest Pro Lock is how you can replace that O-ring uh, over time. But in, in my mind, I'm, I'm thinking it's the shark bite is so much easier to use than sweat and pipe together. Um, we just got to answer that question. Uh, is it gonna is it gonna last long term? Yep. Uh, again, they've been been out for 15 years. My personal experience with using them is I had great success and I had very few failures with them. 
Now the failures, would you say that was a product specific or could it possibly be an application error? I think it was application more than anything, a uh, burr on the pipe or damaged an O-ring. Yeah, uh, well that, that brings up uh, the next topic. Well, Don, we've talked about the materials that can be used with them, how you put them together, how you take them apart. Well, let's address the good things about them and maybe some of the not so good things about them. What's, what are some of the advantages of shark bite? Well, the biggest advantage is the time-saving application when, you, when you're trying to do a, an emergency repair or if you, you don't have the ability to get a plumber in, you don't have to uh, solder, you don't have to drain the plumbing, you can just cut. And, and make that repair. If you need to take it apart, you can and redo it. You don't have to replace the entire length of pipe. Uh, their temperature and pressure ratings are, are higher. They're much better on copper pipe. Uh, some of the cons about them is you can't take them apart to repair them and they are, uh, they're expensive. Ah, so they're a little price prohibitive, and if the if the seal fails, you're right. you're done. You're, right. you're you're in the closet. Well, that's one of the advantages of the John Guest Quick Connect, is I can take this fitting apart and replace that O-ring seal um, if if I start to see that uh, it's in an environment where it could dry out, or, or if if a leak should should start. Let's say that I didn't clean the pipe very good and it had a burr on it and I went through that O-ring and sliced it, that's going to leak. And with the John Guest design, I can pull that O-ring out and replace it with a fresh O-ring. Uh, the John Guest works really good on plastic pipe. Uh, we would tell you to kind of keep with PEX and CPVC. Um, the, the thing that uh, happens with the plastic fittings is they're not quite as high pressure or heat tolerant as the shark bites. And, and if you're using them on a hot water line, the hotter the temperature of the water and the plumbing, the less pressure the fitting will withstand. Well, there's a lot of information here. There's a lot of cool things about these types of fittings. And, and I think we need to mention some of the real do's and don'ts when you're using these kind of fittings. The first one would be how you cut the, uh, the pipe or the tubing. Absolutely, yeah. You want to make sure that you use a tubing cutter rather than a hacksaw because you're going to leave burrs on the pipe and uh, you may not get it cleaned up enough to not damage O-rings. So definitely use a tubing cutter. Uh, when, the other things you need to, to do is to definitely deburr with the, with the shark bites. With, use the deburr tool, clean everything up no matter what type of pipe it is. Uh, don't use sandpaper because you'll leave scratches on it and, and you'll not get a good seal. Uh, other things to remember is when you're using a, a removal tool, make sure you get the right size. Uh, they're, they're size specific. This one is for a one inch pipe. You'll have to get a three quarter inch or a half inch, whatever size piping you're working on, you, you need to get the proper tool. We talked about before that there's two ways, just uh, make sure you've got the proper side up so that it will press on a collet ring. Well, I, I think it's important to, to note that both fitting styles are relying on, a, on an O-ring type seal to, to, to seal the water line. And if anything can penetrate, take a chunk out of, slice that O-ring seal, then all our work is out in, in the trash can because the, the SIP fitting will not seal. Right. So most of the don'ts are going to rely on how the tube pipe is cut before it goes into the fitting. And, and that little depth gauge is a great idea to make sure Absolutely. that you've got all the tubing into the fitting and there's no chance that you missed the seal and didn't get a good, good uh, watertight seal. Absolutely, it only takes a second to do it and then you, you can be sure you'll be successful in getting it in there. One other quick tip is on tubing. Uh, anything that comes in a roll, if it's bent, uh, has a little bit of a curve to it, try to straighten it out as best as you can before you push it in because you'll get better success with the seal. Yeah, it almost takes that, that circular seal and, and you're stretching it into an oval, right. which is never good in O-ring speak. Well, Don, we've talked quite a bit about these fittings. There's, there's several applications for them. Seem to be really cool. So we need to answer the question, are they reliable? Would you use them for a behind-the-wall um, run? Would you bury them? And just 
What's the safety factor? How, how comfortable are you using these types of fittings? I've used a lot of them over the years, and I really feel confident in them. Uh, I, I actually only had one fitting failure in the 15 years that I was using them, and that was not a, a, a fitting failure. It was a, a an operator error. Pilot I, error. Yeah, right? pilot error. I don't think I cleaned the tubing well enough and damaged the O-ring that was inside it. But uh, I would use a little common sense, though. I, I never used them behind walls. I never used them in underground applications. I, I would keep the fittings where you can see them. That way, if there is a failure, you're going to be able to take care of it before it becomes a big mess. Yeah, and a leak behind the wall is never good. No, absolutely Never not. good. In comparison, Don, I think the, the John Gess Prolox series is just as reliable providing that the application uh, and the right pipe is used. Um, keep in mind the, the temperature and pressure tolerance is not quite as much as the shark bite. Um, they are probably, I would not be comfortable behind a wall without an access panel, and I certainly uh, don't think I'd bury them without protection. Uh, but just an awesome tool and connector for for doing quick repairs, quick plumbing jobs. Well, that wraps up our topic today about Shark Bite and John Gas Pro Lock. Be sure and like this video, subscribe to our channel, and if you have any questions or you want to know more information, check us out on our website at freshwatersystems.com. <music>